So, you want to edit video like a pro, do you? Well, you've come to the right place. I've been working in Blender for a very long time, so I'm confident that I have what it takes to show you everything you need to know in order to take your videos to the next level. So in today's video, we're going to be transforming Blender into the best free video editing software you've ever seen. Roll the new intro. Oh, right, I didn't make it yet. Let's start off by opening up a brand new instance of Blender. And of course, we're going to be opening its video editing template. By default, Blender's video editor is lacking, to say the least. Which is why, in this video, we're going to be creating our very own custom default startup file. Because while there are a lot of settings we need to change, if you're just changing them as you go, you're gonna have to do it again. Because every time you open up Blender and go to make a new video, everything gets reset. That's because it's loading all of the settings that are held within the default startup file. This little dot blend file right here. Luckily, Blender makes it easy to overwrite this file with whatever settings you want, and you don't have to mess around with trying to find the file like I did for the last clip. You can save it right here in Blender under File, Defaults, and Save Startup File. Once you choose this option, the default startup file will then be overwritten by the file you're currently in. So anything you change in here will get saved into that file. And Blender is not picky about what it saves. It'll save anything, including how far down you scrolled in a random menu. So keep in mind while you're changing things not to leave stuff where you don't want it. How did that get there? So anyway, let's go ahead and start changing stuff. First of all, let's put Blender into full screen mode. A lot of people don't even know you can do this, by the way. But how else would I record my videos in such pristine quality? Certainly not in half-assed mode. I mean, windowed mode. Whatever. Alright, so these black borders are just taking up space. Space that we're going to need. So we need to try and get rid of it. And yeah, I know I over explain things, but there are beginners who are watching this video. So if you have anything to complain about, eat my shoe and maybe get some protein. You heard me. So anyway, these black borders are taking up a lot of space. Space that we're going to need. So if we hover our mouse cursor over the edge of this window, we can grab it and then resize it. And yes, the shoe thing still stands. Shoe protein. Ugh. I'm going to adjust it so that we can still see the edge of the preview, but not very much of it, just to the point that we can still see those little dotted lines. Now over here in the file explorer, let's hit T on our keyboard to expand this volume menu. This menu will really come in handy when you need to navigate to a file or folder. And now that it's expanded, we can adjust the preview window again to get rid of the wasted space where the file menu isn't displaying any folders. Probably should have expanded that first. Anyway, I think that having a bigger preview window is really nice. So while we're at it, why don't we go ahead and drag this down a little bit too. Just a little bit though, not too much. All right, that right there looks pretty good to me. Now hidden down here is our timeline. We need this for keyframing. It's kind of crunched down in there, so let's grab the edge of it and pull it up a little bit. And there's everything we need for keyframes. You see what I mean about stuff being hidden? Anyway, that's about everything as far as adjusting the UI goes. So let's go through the menus and unhide some stuff. Up here, under this menu, we can choose to show the 2D cursor. The 2D cursor is a really useful tool that we'll be using in future videos. I feel like this should be on by default, but it is now, so whatever. So now down here under this menu, we can choose to display audio waveforms. For those of you who don't know what audio waveforms are, it's basically just a display to show you what the audio looks like. So when you import a video with an audio file or just an audio file, File, it'll display it like this. This will come in handy if you want to match your keyframes to your audio, like how I've been zooming in on things as soon as I start to mention them. You can also choose to show thumbnails on video clips under the same menu, but I find that it causes lag and looks glitchy, so I'm leaving that one off. Of course, this is all just personal preference, but if you do turn it on, I think you'll see what I mean. Ugh. Sound effects. If you want to, you can also choose to show offsets, but it's just another thing to look at and I don't really like it. So if you want to turn it on, that's up to you. All right, now under this menu, we want to turn on audio scrubbing. Scrubbing is when you grab the playhead and drag it around. With this option on, audio will play as you scrub over it. Ooh, I don't know why I did that. I blame the coffee, it's the coffee. Anyway, while we're in here, let's turn on the follow current frame option so that whenever you're playing your video back, it'll follow the playhead whenever it tries to go off the screen. Obviously, that's a nice feature, so we have to have that on. Or I'm just really picky. I think it's both. But I really do like the option, so yeah. Alrighty then, that's it as far as these options go, so let's go ahead and go over our rendering settings. 
Here we have our video's resolution. I record in 4K, so I'm going to set it to be 3840 by 2160. But if your videos are in 1080p, then you can leave it at 1920 by 1080, which is already set by default. And if you're unsure what resolution you're running, you can always right-click your video file and check under its properties. It's important that this is set correctly because this is the resolution your video is going to render to. And if it's wrong, you're going to have some pretty big issues. If it's a higher resolution than what your video really is, then it'll make the video blur. And if it's lower than the resolution you're running, it's going to make the video way too sharp. So I cannot stress this enough. You need to make sure it's right. The next setting we're going to change is the frame rate. Of course, all my videos are 60 frames per second. So that's just a given for me. And 60 frames per second should be a given for you. Well, only if you want your videos to run as smooth as butter. So again, just keep in mind that you can change it anytime you want to. Anyway, the frame range here doesn't really matter until you import a video. And there's a shortcut that makes adjusting it really easy. So I'm just going to leave it where it's at, because we can easily change it later on. Now down here in the output dropdown, we're going to want to set this to be our finalizing folder. But we haven't made a finalizing folder yet. Well, let's go make one. And let's set everything else up as we go. So we're going to set up a few folders. Whether you're on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, or whatever, you're going to want to go to your file explorer and navigate to wherever you want your project files to be. As you can see, I'm running on Windows. Which really doesn't matter unless you're a Linux vegan. Linux vegans? Go eat some protein. You know what kind of protein I'm talking about. <clears throat> Remember that you can always put this folder on an external drive or wherever you want. I have an empty one terabyte SSD, so that's where I'm going to put mine. So I'm going to right click anywhere in here, create new and create a new folder. You can name it whatever you want to, but I'm going to name this one YouTube. It's important to have a good file structure when you're editing videos. So inside of this folder, we're going to go ahead and make a few more. So let's create a folder for our project files. This is where we're going to store our dot blend files. I'm going to name it a space dash space project files. If it isn't clear already, I really like having my stuff named alphabetically. Anyway, I record in OBS Studio and I need a place for my video recordings to go to. So I need another folder and I'm going to name it just like the first one. B space dash space video. I think you get the gist of what I'm doing here. So let's not waste any more time. Boop. Images, obviously for images, audio, obviously for our audio, and finalizing for our video whenever we render it. And that's all we need. So quit being a slacker and let's get back to Blender. Sheesh, now I need some protein. So back where we left off, let's go ahead and set this to be our finalizing folder. To do that, let's go ahead and hit this little button. Over here, you can go to whatever drive you have your folders on, go into your file, go into finalizing, and hit accept. Your output file is now set. So let's go ahead and change some more settings. Let's go ahead and leave our rendering settings for a second to come over here and navigate to our new folder. Obviously, since this is where all of our stuff is going to be, we're going to want to have it in the right place. OK, let's go ahead and get back to the rendering settings. File format here is already what we want it to be. So let's go ahead and expand the encoding tab. We're going to change this from MPEG4 to QuickTime. I would say this doesn't really matter, but it does. QuickTime supports better audio codecs. Now under the video tab, let's go ahead and change the video codec. We're going to want to change this to H.264. If you leave this where it is, you're going to be making an MP4 file. And we don't want that. MP4 files are low quality. You can think of the difference between H.264 and MPEG4 like it's the difference between a PNG and a JPEG. And with all the same settings but a different encoder, I think you can see the difference. Apparently that's lossless. Speaking of, next let's go to our output quality and set it to be lossless. Because YouTube degrades the quality enough as it is. This way you won't be degrading it twice in a row. Actually we will be anyway, since we don't have the option to change the color space to I444. So reds and purples are going to become a little bit blurry. Not a big deal since YouTube will change it, and most people don't have the eyes to notice it anyway unless you're zoomed way in. So whatever. Now let's set the encoding speed to real time, because I don't really care about file size. I care about faster rendering. But if you want a smaller file size, go ahead and set this to slowest. Fair warning, your renders will take a little bit longer. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our audio. We're going to change this from AAC to PCM. The reason we changed the container format earlier is because MPEG4 doesn't support this. Anyway, PCM is a lot higher quality. Now let's change the sample rate to 192 kilohertz, which is 192,000. Apparently you can't hear the difference, but I can. We apparently can't see the difference between 30 hertz and 60 hertz either. Huh, I wonder why. I guess the human body must just be limited. Or some idiots think they're smart. Honestly, it baffles me that they don't ever give you any good information. And they just lie about everything. I'm right, you're wrong! <laughs> I've had way too much coffee for this video.
If you believe in that BS, you can leave it at 48,000 hertz. But I suggest setting it to 192,000 hertz because there really is a difference. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set our audio bitrate to be 320. And now our rendering properties are all set up. So let's go ahead and set up our quick favorites. If you hit Q on your keyboard, you'll see that a little menu pops up. There are a few things we're going to be using a lot while editing videos. For instance, you can zoom in and out on the preview. But when you're done, you're going to want to reset it somehow. Under the view menu, there's a zoom to fit option. This is going to scale your preview back to where it's supposed to be. Let's right click that and add it to our quick favorites. So now whenever you hit Q, the option is right there. And now you have easy access to it. So let's go ahead and add another option. Under the image menu, there's an option called apply. I'm not sure why, but for some reason you can't set a shortcut for this. In Blender's 3D template, this is control A, but in here it's not assigned to anything. So since we can't add a shortcut, let's go ahead and just add it to our quick favorite menu. Okay, so there's another option we're gonna wanna add. Under our sequencers view menu, there's another menu called range. And at the very bottom of that menu is an option called set frame range to strips. This is a little bit of a hidden gem. It allows you to automatically set the frame range to the strips that you have selected. A little bit hidden, but it's a really useful option. Now, before I forget, let's add that to our quick favorites. And finally, now we can save our startup file. Oh yeah, and uh, saving your default startup file while in full screen mode will make Blender always be in full screen mode when you start it up. It's not really my cup of tea, but you can do whatever you want with it. I put the file down in the comments and the description, so if you want to, you can go ahead and just go download it. But you're probably going to have to modify it because you're probably not running the same resolution I am. And even if you are running 4K, you're probably not going to be running the same scale that I am. That's going to mess things up too. So I highly recommend that you just follow the video so you don't have to mess around with that crap. 4K on Windows is a nightmare. Anyway, that's it for this video. There's still a lot to cover, so don't you worry. By the time I'm done here, you're going to have a completely different perspective on what it means to edit video in Blender. See you in the next one.